wrong of me not to address it, not to address this attack of the enemy. Hallelujah. Let's have us a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we lift you up. Does that mean anything? We ask you to encourage us to do the things we need to do. To say the things we need to say. To make the changes that we need to make in the precious, magnificent name of Jesus we pray and the church says amen. amen. Galatians chapter 3 verses 5 through 9 it reads, so then does he who provides you with the spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? Even so, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Therefore, verse 7, therefore be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. The scripture foreseeing, verse number 8, incredible, important, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. So then those who are of faith are blessed with Abraham the believer. Skip now down to verse 26 through 28. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Note this, he's talking to the church. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, for all of you who were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ, neither, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 28 again, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Hallelujah. He cut down and broke out the race barrier. There is neither slave nor free. He cut out the social barrier. There is neither male nor female. He cut out the sex barrier. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I need to address the current unrest in our nation, but I have to also focus on Cincinnati first. Why? Because love begins at home. We're doing this out of love. 1829. Here in Cincinnati, African Americans number 10% of the city's population. 1,000 African Americans were driven out of town because their numbers were getting too big. In April of, and July of 1836, the Cincinnati riots were caused by racial tensions This happened at a time when African Americans, some of which had escaped from slavery, were competing with whites for jobs. The rioters attacked both blacks and the whites who were supporting them. A former slave owner by the name of James Birney became an abolitionist 
And in 1836, he started a newspaper. And this newspaper targeted slave owners right across the river in Kentucky. And this angered local business people because they were keen to doing business in the southern states. Therefore, a riot broke out in April. Buildings were burned. Several blacks lost their lives. The riot was only brought under control when the governor intervened and declared martial law here in Cincinnati. In 1841, a mob of white men met in the Fifth Street Market and they marched on a part of the city downtown known as Little Africa or Bucktown. But the African Americans there were armed and ready. The whites secured a cannon and rolled it down 6th Street and shot it toward Bucktown. Many people lost their lives. Martial law was again declared. 300 black men were arrested, and while they were in custody, many of their homes were attacked. In 1884, known as the Cincinnati Courthouse Riots, these were the most violent in Cincinnati history. A mob in Cincinnati attempted to find and lynch a black man who had been convicted of murder. Over 50 people died in that riot. And the courthouse and the jail were burned and destroyed. In 1935, there was a fight at the Euler School in Price Hill between a black student and a white student. It escalated, got out of control. Police were forced to block the 8th Street Viaduct to separate, to separate groups of angry whites and angry blacks. 16 people were arrested. In 1967, oh, I remember that, oh, known as the Avondale Riots, followed years of police abuse and living conditions in the community of Avondale. The papers called it the poor community of Avondale, but I lived there. I, I was raised there. I didn't know I was poor. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The riots followed a conviction of a young man. He was accused of being the Cincinnati Strangler. And when his cousin was arrested because he was loitering near the Abraham Lincoln statue here in Havendale, crowds filled the streets and threw bottles and firebombs. And the business district at that point was destroyed. How do I know? I was there. I saw it. I remember when my mom and dad would send me from our street up Reading Road to get my hair cut on Reading Road at the barber shop. I remember on Forest Avenue there used to be a theater that we would go to. Oh, hallelujah. A thriving business district destroyed. Ohio, the Ohio National Guard was called in to restore order. One person died. There were 404 arrests. And in 1968, President Johnson's Commission on Civil Disorders issued a report about Cincinnati. 
and the practice of police officers stopping blacks on foot or in cars without obvious basis and using loitering laws against minorities. In 1968, the Avondale riots broke out again. This time, it was sparked by the assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Store windows were smashed, stores looted, merchandise burned. The Ohio National Guard was called in to restore peace. Two people were killed. 220 injured, 260 arrested. Watch out. 2001. I was there again. This was called the largest urban disorder in the United States since the Los Angeles riots of 1992. Three days. Three days of rioting triggered by the fatal police shooting of a black teenager by the name of Timothy Thomas. Then Mayor Charlie Lucan, by the way, he was a good mayor, a great mayor, he issued a citywide curfew. After the immediate crisis had ended, damage was counted in the millions, about 3.6 million. Many businesses in the downtown area were damaged. 63 rioters were indicted on felony charges. Why go through all this? Consider this. Different generations, different people, but the same unrest. Why? Because the same environment exists. The same environment, or, or, let's say it another way, the same spirit exists. That spirit that has tried to wiggle itself into our government and into our schools and into our businesses and, and even into our churches. Spirit of lawlessness from that anti-God, anti-anointing spirit called Satan. By the way, Satan is not the name of the devil. Satan is a title that God gave him. Satan means liar. A liar is nothing but a murderer. Satan, the liar, because he told the first lie. He's the creator of the lie. Satan, the original murderer. Satan, the original mass killer. Satan, who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan, the liar. Please look in your Bibles. 1 John chapter 3. He that committeth sin, I like that word committeth, I like the E-T-H. It means continuation. If you practice this, God identifies he that committeth, that practices sin, is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Can I say that again? For this reason was Jesus Christ born that he might destroy the works of the devil. Christ is not his last name. Christ is his title. It refers 
to the power that God has given him and the purpose that God has placed upon him. Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. For this purpose was the anointing manifested that Jesus might destroy the very works of the devil. Hallelujah. Verse 9 says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed, God's seed, remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. In other words, he can't practice this and live with it. Because he is born of God. He can't practice sin and, and be comfortable in it. Why? Because he's born of God. He can't practice sin and not have God raise up inside of him. Who am I talking to? In this, verse 10, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. There's a scripture that identifies I won't read it, but the good I want to do, I don't do it. The evil I don't want to do, I do. I find in a law that when I would do good, when I try to do good, when I want to do better, evil is always present. Who or what can deliver me from this spirit? Pentecost. Jesus identified that I was with you, but I need to be inside of you. How was that going to happen? Pentecost. He identified that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and come inside of you. How is that going to happen? Pentecost. Pentecost gives you the power to address that insidious anti-God spirit that seems to attack our people, black people and white people. The scripture says, without a vision, the people perish. I won't break it down all the way, but a vision of what? It's a vision of the word of God that is relevant for our today situation. It's relevant for our today situation. A vision that God has filled you with power and authority to be light and to be salt. A vision that God has filled you to be light and to be salt. Actually, he says salt first and then light that follows. Why? Salt, because there's a savor. You have a flavor that has come from God. And that flavor is to bring light into situations. A vision that God has filled you with power and authority to influence decisions that affect lives of people and conditions of our families and, and neighborhoods and, and laws. A vision that, yes, you can go to school. A vision that you can start that business and make it successful and keep it successful. A vision that God has got a purpose for all of us. And you are absolutely essential in distributing the grace and the power of God. A vision that God didn't just fail you with the gift of the Holy Ghost so you can die and go to heaven. God did not just fail you to clap your hands, but God failed you to march, to talk, to influence the situation that we happen to live in. Open wide, cry loud, spare not. A vision that now are we the sons of God. God has work for me to do today. God's got work for you to do today. My people are destroyed because they just don't recognize it. 
Don't you know the world around you is growing, waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God? Apostles, speak out and lead. Preachers, prophesy, foretell and foretell. Evangelists, evangelize. Pastors, come on somebody, preach. Teachers teach. What? Pentecost. Pentecost at any cost. You can be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can be filled with the presence and the power of God. For this reason was the Son of God manifested that we might destroy. Oh, Bishop, you had it wrong. It says that he, oh, I got it right, we. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it identifies that God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. And in chapter 6, verse number 1, it goes on to identify that we are workers together with him. God has no hands but your hands. God has no mouth but your mouth. We can make a change. And the power inside of you, the Holy Ghost inside of you, has anointed you, appointed you, prepared you to be salt and to be light and to influence and make the changes. Hallelujah. We have something occurring in our city right now all yesterday and day before yesterday glory to God but we also have a counter demonstration happening and it's called the Pentecost celebration great God Almighty the word identifies that we're surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. What are they doing? Oh, I know it's talking about in the Bible and so forth and so on. But I believe the angels are sitting up and looking at us. What are you going to do? And God has prophetically situated some things to deal with such a time as this. Tonight, we will hear from two of the prophets that God has put in charge of a primarily black organization and a primarily white organization. By the way, that separation is not of God. And these two prophetic Apostolic leaders are prepared to bring us a word from heaven. The young people from the day of Pentecost celebration foundation here in Cincinnati, Ohio, had a wonderful service, a wonderful service yesterday. And Elder Josiah Brock sp spoke a prophetic word over the people. The Holy Ghost through him was canceling out the power of the enemy. We agree. that the word of the Lord will go forth and shake up our churches. Oh, let me be more specific. 
We don't need a shake up on the building. We need a shake up in the buildings. In the sanctuary. From the parishioners to the pulpit. That we can begin to operate in the ministry of reconciliation that God has given us. Grace Christian Fellowship, I am so proud of you. Not proud in a carnal sense, but proud in an humbled sense. I'm humbled by the grace that God has bestowed upon you. As small in number as you are, you didn't look around at your numbers, but you decided to stand up and operate in your ministries. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, carrying the word of God out to the community that God has assigned us to. Whether you go to the schools, or to the corners and everything in between. I'm humbled by how each of you are allowing the Word of God to grow inside of you and to minister. Let's have us a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I absolutely adore and I thank you and I appreciate you. You're God all by yourself. Lord God, you declared in your word that you hover over your word. You you look over your word, you hasten over your word to perform it. We now agree with you that greater are you in us than that anti-God, anti-anointing spirit that is in the world. So now we speak a peace. Hallelujah. And we speak a courage, hallelujah. And we speak a further vision of who we are in you. And the power of purpose. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Please remember, hallelujah, that today at 7 o'clock, you can go to Facebook, go to Pentecost Cincinnati for those two services. The superintendent of the United Pentecostal Churches, Superintendent Bernard, and the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, Bishop Brooks. By the way, I am in a unique position, as of many of you that are listening from around the country. Um, I do not belong to either organization. Oh, but I recognize 